Okay, what we're we'll doing on, in this session is to look at some of the very fundamental descriptive statistics that Excel can do, and Excel can do it very well. So for example, we have a data set here. Um, I have 10 students and they are, let's say this is the exam results, okay? English, Chinese, Maths, and Science. So in other words, every student occupies one row. The subject occupies a column. So let's say, I can just try to figure out what is the average marks for, assuming they are in the same class, what's the average marks for English? So the function, we can use a function here, let's say that you want to find the average. The function is just you type in the word average, okay? Open bracket, and then you just drag whichever data that you want. Okay, close it, and then that calculates you the average. So it's 77, 73.3 marks for English. Now average also have, all functions also have this capability. You can actually select only specific values. For example, I want the average of John, Kenneth, and let's say Karen. Okay. Here you have to take note that it must be a comma, not semicolon. So the average of John, Kenneth, and Karen's English is about 72.7 marks. Okay. So let's finish up the average. Average. It doesn't matter if it's capital or small letters, it's fine. Um, so we can, let's see if I want to calculate the average for Chinese, maths, and science. Instead of redoing everything, I can just drag it along. And that will help me calculate. So what you need to do is go back to a formula to see whether it's calculating the correct stuff. Similarly, I can calculate the average by student. So you will be you will do the same thing. Okay, so this average for each student. So this is the average marks. Now I can do there are a lot of functions for um, descriptive statistics. One of them will be your standard deviation. So your standard um, deviation. So standard deviation is actually using you use the standard deviation dot s. Okay, standard deviation dot b is for population standard deviation. So because it's a small sample, you use standard deviation dot s. So this will help you to calculate the standard deviation. Okay. All right, so that's actually quite easy. Now, if you want to look at what are some of the functions that Excel can do, you can just go to, let me just repeat again, you can click on this FX button Choose the category, for example, statistics, and then you kind of, there's a whole list of it. You can try to read through what does it do. So let's say, for example, I want to calculate um, the, the standard deviation. Okay, so I click on it. It actually tells me number one, number two. So if I do not know, I can just try to highlight and then see whether does it give me something. If it doesn't give me anything, that means it may be wrong. Okay, for example, yeah, it can be wrong. So I only need number one, I don't need number two and so on. Or I can say that I want the standard deviation of John, um, Kenneth, and Cindy. So that is a standard deviation. So you press OK and that gives you the result. Okay. So this is one way that we can do it. There are lots of functions around. We can, there's, for example, you can do minimum, min, minimum. So minimum marks is just min minimum. So you can use it to look at what is the minimum marks for each subject and what is the maximum marks for each subject. So this is the maximum mark for each subject. So it's max. Okay, so now you have a whole set of statistics that you can do quite easily. Another way to do it is to use this data analysis tab. It actually generates everything for you, okay? Or rather, most of the things that you need. So you can click on, let me repeat, data analysis is under data tab, data analysis, descriptive statistics, click on it. Okay, so what I want is, I highlight the whole input range, the whole thing. Then I say I group by rows or columns. That means I want to calculate either 
rows or columns. So if I calculate rows, it will give me the average marks for English, Chinese, Maths and Science. Because I highlighted the labels as a first row, so it will treat the first row as a label. Now if I click on rows, what it means is it will, okay, so I'll just do the columns first. Okay, so I have a defined output range. Let's say I put it in um, G1. Okay, and I want the summary statistics. Okay, so I click OK. Oops. Uh, columns, summary statistics. Let's see what, what they select. Oh, because I cannot, these are um, non numeric, so I have to do only for this. Okay, otherwise, what is the average of? John, the name John, Mary, Kenneth, and so on. It doesn't make any sense. Okay, so I have this. Now I generate the whole statistics for me. Just as it's a bit difficult to look at. In fact, you can see that the mean for English is 73.3, .3, same as here. Mean average for Chinese is 67.1, and so on and so forth. This is a standard error, not a standard deviation. This is a standard deviation for English is 5.2, 5.207 for maths or for Chinese, it is uh, 8.3. So just let me highlight the same color for you. It makes your life easier. Okay, so like this, and then this will be here. Maybe just highlight a yeah, different color. And then let's just say that you want to highlight maths, the standard deviation for maths. Okay, um, let's say for science, we want to take find the maximum. Okay, the maximum. Okay, you see, it, it, it gives you everything that you need to find out. Now, assuming that we do not want this step, if I want to calculate by person, I can do the same. I go to data analysis again, descriptive statistics. Now, instead of Selecting the subjects, I select based on the call the rows. Okay, so here I base on the rows, and it tells me my label. The name is actually on the first column. Okay, so I change the output range and put just below it, and just click OK. Now, this is a whole list of data. It tells me that the average marks that John get out of the four subjects is. 66.25, the average marks for Mary is so what, is 70, average marks for Kenneth is 67.75 and so on. It will calculate the same set of statistics for you. Okay, It's just determined by whether is it calculating based on subject or by person. Okay, so you can start to explore this quite readily. Um, the more you explore in Excel, the easier it gets for you. Okay, that's all that we have for now. Thank you.